it's Jules and the Bull. Oh, right. I can figure it out. I suck at this part. I suck at this camera shit. So, how was your week? How was your last week? Oh, it was awesome. I did a lot of cool stuff. I leveled up. You leveled up. Yeah, I leveled up. Business wise, I leveled up. You did? Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just not going to get into it, you know, because it's my business. No, it's fine. But I'm still not going to get into it. So. But it's good. But you, you're going up. You're going yeah. forward. <laughs> Moving forward, man. That's Love awesome. it. Awesome. So, what about you? How was your week? Oh, not bad. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, same thing. Um, same thing? Yeah, you leveled up too? What'd you do? Uh, I, love, uh, I don't know yet. I'm working on it. You're um, working on it. It seems like it is. It's, I'm still in that place where I have to <laughs> analyze the shit out of everything. Oh, yeah. Because I'm Got never over, sure. Okay. And nothing ever feels stable. Nothing ever feels grounded. Nothing mm-hmm. ever feels, you know, locked into place. Yeah. Like we were talking about last week, so yeah, still working on it. But, but we had a breakthrough last week, so that was that was brilliant. That's right? true, we did, we we yeah. did. Yeah. Right at the last second, like at the zero hour, right before we cut the live, we were like, <laughs> we had a breakthrough. Yeah, so, I know, I was so yeah. excited about that. That was great. So beautiful, so beautiful. It was beautiful. Yes, it was. Nice. Very much so. Huh? What was that? I said very much so. Oh, yeah. So what are we talking about today? What's our big subject? Oh man, I forgot. What is it? See, that happens sometimes when you do that stuff. What stuff are you talking about? I don't know. Um, is it green stuff? Yeah, they call it... There's a lot it of different with, names. It starts with a C, I think. Yeah. Like the proper name for the it. The proper name for it, yeah. yeah. I think it's uh, um, cars, no? no? Camping. Camping. That's yeah. close. Yeah, it is. Very close. I'm surprised. With Can you opener. Say so I can do it too. <laughs> Channeling? No, that doesn't work. Does Cannibalism. It? What else Ow. starts with C? I don't know. Uh, candy. Candy. Okay, now that's in the same They're getting same closer, level. right? Yeah, they're getting closer. Uh, um, not carcinogenics. <laughs> that's not going to work. I no, think that's that all the way out. Um, I think it was. <sighs> Cannabis. Cannabis. That's yes, it. that's right. We were going to talk. We are talking about cannabis today, and please join in the conversation. Uh, go ahead, comment on uh, Facebook. We will see your comments, and uh, you know we'll be able to respond to you guys. So, any questions? Anything you want to share? Yeah, hit us up. So, please hit us up. We need people to talk to. We get tired of talking to each other. Not really, but I mean, you know, it'd be nice to talk to other adults. I'm just saying. It would be, yes. Conversing is good. But we have this good banter. Yes. This great banter. Very much so. We do. We do. But I mean, like, uh, and if you're in the Tampa Bay area, I mean, just come down to Ybor City on Wednesdays, mm-hmm. 7 o'clock. And guess what? You can be right here. And then we have seats over in this area over here. Peanut gallery. Over in this area over here. And, um, yeah, you can sit in with us live and uh, we can at least hear your voices if you if you want to voice your opinion about something or get into the conversation, yeah, we might even throw in an extra seat and let you take turns coming in and talking with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, whatever goes. That's whatever goes, yeah. That's what it we'll is. Just see how it happens. What happens? And uh, we are at uh, Grassroots Kava here in Ebor City. They they're kind enough to let us use this room, and we are working to help bring in more more people to the Kava world as well, but it was speaking of plant medicine. Yes, CBD. CBD. Apple CBD. Apple mm. CBD. They sell it here, man. So come on down, grab your can, and come listen to us talk about yeah. cannabis. And join in the conversation. So, where did you want to start with? I know we had some Let's start news. with, yeah, let's start with the news, and then um, we'll just go from there. All right, that sounds good. So, good news for um, those of us who are cannabis uh, patients and so on, and people who are hoping to be, and people who were originally or in between 1992 and 2021 um, who were uh, arrested for possession of cannabis. Good news here. This past week, President Biden stated he's going to be reforming cannabis laws pardoning all 6,500 people with prior federal offenses for the simple possession of a life-saving drug. Um, and that, or not a drug, but a life-saving plant. And that life-saving plant is, of course, cannabis. So from 1992 to 2021, all of those people with prior federal offenses are going to be pardoned. So that's great. 
Now, Biden is working with the Attorney General and the Secretary of Health and Human Services to review how federal law has uh, kind of scheduled, because currently it's scheduled as a, a, a scheduled one drug, yeah. And um, it, it's, of course, it's, it's, it's a miracle plant, and it puts it in the same category as heroin and LSD, by being a Schedule One drug. It's classified as that. So removing that Schedule One will make it more available, readily available to others. Uh, it, and of course, can only can't. Blah, 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 blah. It's okay. It happens. I know. Right. So of course, over scheduling the reform and and uh, you know for cannabis is going to impact lots of places, the cannabis industry, federal laws, uh, and states. Uh, President Biden is urging lawmakers at the local level, the state level, to follow suit with changing how cannabis is scheduled. So, uh, five states have added cannabis to their November ballots this year. That's Arkansas, Maryland, Missouri, North and South Dakota, and they're driving to legalize cannabis. Uh, Colorado has added the legalization of psychedelics like MDMA to their reform for this year, for this year's ballots. So that is some pretty killer news. That is some killer news. And, and the one thing I also wanted to, point at, wanted to point out, it is not bipartisan at all. It is like everybody on every side has agreed cannabis is a miracle plant, a life-saving plant, and it needs to be legalized. So it's well, not, it's not even a political issue. No. It's nothing. It's, it's, it's a scientific it's, issue. It is. I mean, most people don't even know that we have a cannabinoid system in our body it, that, it, that interacts with the plant. You know, like it was designed, the plant was designed to interact with not only humans, but other animals. Anything that's a spine, right? Pretty much, yeah. Any, any vertebrae. I guess, right? Yeah, I guess so. So, yeah. I mean, it was it was discovered and people just, like, you're not taught about this stuff in school. Um, even a lot of mainstream uh, medical professionals don't even know that the cannabinoid system exists. Yep. I mean, it's just, it's, I think it's, uh, it's a shame. It's a shame that we don't, people aren't aware of it and people aren't taught about it and people, um, and, and, the medical community, which we already know why, um, doesn't really hasn't really acknowledged it that that much. So, but we know why because um, I know you were talking about laws, but let's call it what what it is. Yeah. Like they're just rules. You know? They're rules that that people in power put in place so that they could make money off of other things, i.e., pharmaceuticals and, and things like that. And we're going to get into we're going to get into that. I got some stories about pharmaceuticals and how. Cannabis can be used to get people off of those very, 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 those should be scheduled one mm -hmm. um, uh, pharmaceutical pills and, and things like that. But um, yeah, um, laws, laws are, if, if we define our terms, man, laws, what they call laws aren't really laws, they're rules. And rules are made by the rulers, right? Laws yep. are things that you can knowably observe within nature and and do scientific experiments to prove or disprove those things so um yeah so laws are already in place by nature uh we discover them every day and uh we can observe them and use a scientific method to to prove them so uh, when we talk about things like that we should probably like use those terms, you know, Absolutely. these are rules that right. governments and, and people in power, and people that are trying to control the masses put into place. Um, and cannabis was one of those things that just helped everyone. Right. I mean, it was used for everything from anti-inflammatories to treating depression, um, anxiety and, and things like that. So it, it's meant to, it's meant for us to, to interact with it. And a lot of people don't know that. And it's here for a reason. That's the other thing. You know, if you're, if you know, if you're, uh, you know, a person of, you know, any sort of, uh, you know, faith or belief or anything in a higher power, yeah. if the higher power created this planet and put that plant on here for for a reason, it's here so for a reason. Yeah. What's the issue? It shouldn't be. Yeah, it shouldn't be a political issue at all. Or any any, it should be an issue for anybody for anything. It's you know. Does it hurt you? 
Does it hurt me? Does it hurt anybody else? No. Nope. No. Then that's all that matters. Exactly. I mean, if if an action does not um, do harm, if it doesn't injure someone, damage someone's property, or prevent someone for, from performing um, uh, a right action, then there's there's no reason for other people to tell you you can't do something. No, absolutely not. And uh, yeah, and that and the whole you know. Yeah, that can be another conversation. Oh, yeah, about definitely, the whole, definitely. About the whole, yeah, you know, telling people what they need to do. So I, I, I'm an adult. You're an adult. I think we all need to, we can make our own decisions. I don't need yep. somebody to tell me. Because as an adult, whatever action you take, whether it's a right action or a wrong action, you accept the consequences of those actions. That's what makes an adult. Good point. Very you know, good point. That's what makes an adult. So, I mean, there's plenty of adults that aren't, quote, unquote, <laughs> adults that aren't adults. So. Yes, there are. Yeah, there are. Because adult comes from the word autodidact. It comes from, a, it's a derivative of autodidact. So. I love that you, you know this word. Thank you. I it's love so etymology. Oh, I know. It's pretty awesome. I use it. So yeah. tell us about your CBDs. Tell us more about what CBD is and you know, oh, your CBD apple CBD cider. is a specific molecule from the cannabis plant. Um, it's called cannabis oil. Right? Yes. That's how you pronounce it? Well, uh, I don't know. Let's see. What cannabis is it oil. Can, 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 can cannabinoid yeah. or something like that. Cannabinoid. Right? Anyway, so, CBD. Anyway, so, I mean, it's been shown that it could reduce inflammation. It could um, uh, increase brain function. Yeah, a lot of different benefits to CBD, especially for people who don't want the psychedelic effects of the THC. Um, it's a good alternative. Uh, I don't know. I'm not big on CBD. I will take it because for me, what I found out through personal experimentation um, is when um, I'm too, when I take too much of THC mm -hmm. and a lot of you that have done that before you get way too out there. I found that CBD within 10 minutes, if I take, if I ingest CBD, it will bring me down off of it. So really? it's kind of like a, oh yeah, mm -hmm. like an antidote to the THC, kind of. Yeah, it kind of counters it. So yeah. if you get a little too much in the psycho in the psychoactive aspect of it, then you can have some CBD, and that kind of brings it back. So like when I tell people who are doing edibles for the first time, I'm like, hey, make sure you have some CBD on hand, because if you know, if you know how edibles work, when you ingest it through, you know, you take it orally. Um, it metabolizes different. It comes out a lot stronger once it, it metabolizes through the through the liver. So <laughs> that whole cookie that you just ate probably wasn't a good idea, or that whole brownie, or that whole bag of gummies, or whatever. So when you start to get to a point where you're curled up, <laughs> I know that's that's happened to you, hasn't it? <laughs> It's, it's, it, it's happened to all of us, and some of us times. never learn our lessons. No, we don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. So, no, but anyway, so I tell people that are doing it for the first time be, uh, to have CBD on hand so it can bring you down in case. Because when you ingest it, that, that's like a 9-10 hour psychedelic uh, experience. Whereas opposed to like smoking it or vaping it, then you're talking about one to two hours. Right. You know, so like nine hours of like being really, really out there in outer space is uh, sometimes uncomfortable, you know, so. Um, Just a little bit. Yeah. I, did, I, I didn't know that the first time I did. No, I don't think any of us do. If people warn you, but you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. So what I did was I was given some homemade stuff. So I don't even know what was. You have no clue. I have no clue how, what, much, the, was how much was in it or anything. So I was like, whoa. I had five cookies and it's just like, hmm, Not all right, I'm going to have one. So I had one and then I went for a run. And then when I got back, I'm just like, wow, that's a, that's a nice runner's high. And I was just like, oh no. Oh, it hit afterwards? Yeah, yeah. like You're right so as soon as I stopped. Really? Like as soon as I stopped running, I was just like, whoa, I'm really out there. And um, yeah, I was, I was in the shower all like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had no one to call for a rescue. No, nothing. <laughs> I'm just like I gotta ride this thing out. You know? oh, so yeah, it was a it was a good six seven hours where it was manageable, and then probably another four or five hours after that where nice. I was still God. feeling the effects of the THC. But yeah, um, have CBD on 
on hand just in case you uh, ingest too much and you can't handle it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I handled it. No, of course. I handled it. You, you handled know, it. Man. You are. But anyway, oh. it was still it was still an uncomfortable experience. But um, there's probably reasons for that because when you get that 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 high, I mean, you start dealing with issues internally, like things that maybe triggering. Yeah, that uh, you're not comfortable with about yourself. And sometimes you just have to ride that out and just kind of like deal with it, you know, because obviously it's bothering you. So, I mean, there's some days where I'm just like, I'm going to go full tilt obliteration and I'm going to deal with all the stuff that's inside of me and, you know, maybe talk to the gods or whatever and, and uh, come out better on the other side and level up or whatever and just feel better about myself when I'm done. So on that point, I yeah. wanted to bring up the, um, psychedelics. Mm -hmm. Because now, if you and now microdosing like mushrooms is is now yes. is a big thing too, and for exactly what you were just discussing, having the ability to go a little bit deeper mm -hmm. to deal with some inner stuff that yes. you need to deal with, absolutely. And and how does that work? I mean, it, I don't know how it works. I know how microdosing works because I microdose um, cannabis, um, the RSO, the RSO, the, the yeah. Rick Simpson oil. Mm -hmm. um, I microdose that during the day, and that helps with, in case you didn't know, I have PTSD um, because I saw some bad things and I, I didn't know how to deal with them. I mean, it was just like, just like in your face kind of things. And um, so I started taking RSO and microdosing, and it gets me through the day and it allows me to be functional as well when I microdose uh, RSO. So um, doing it, under a controlled environment like microdosing mm -hmm. rather than just taking a bunch of it and just yeah just tr trying to get through the day or whatever um there's a lot of trial and you know error but you, you figure out what your dosage and, and you get through the day or whatever and it helps with um me dealing with people it helps sometimes with a heightening of, of like intellect honestly yeah like uh, creativity and things like that um, I'm able to stay hyper focused on whatever tasks that I'm dealing with. Whereas if I'm not microdosing, I might not be able to stay as focused as I want to be um, because I'm thinking of other things. My brain starts to wander, but that helps me personally with my physiology and me, my body interacting with with cannabinoids. That's what happens for me anyway. And that's an important thing to know is that we all have different body chemistries yes. and that's why the, the saying is uh, start start low and go slow. Yes, absolutely. So you, have, you're, so you can figure out where your body needs it and how much your body needs and all of that. So, uh, right, you don't have to... And there, there's a lot of factors too. Right? Oh, there are. So like we could just go right here, male, yeah. female, right. boom, there's two different factors. That's facts. Sorry. Don't get mad at people. It's not sexism. It's, it's yeah, just nature. It's just nature. So, um, male physiology is going to interact different than Processing, female yeah. physiology. Um, your genetic makeup is going to be different. Everybody's genetic makeup is different. So that's, you're going to interact with a different, um, mm -hmm. whatever you're dealing with. Like if you're dealing with addiction, then you're going to interact with it differently. If you're de dealing with mental health stuff, you're going to interact with it differently. So it just, it just depends on the makeup. And a lot of people don't know this, but like when you have mental health issues, it's a physiological change that happened to you. So what you're trying to do is to fix it back to, like try and reset it back to where it was. So a lot of people don't understand that because a lot of people don't look into those kind of things. But you have to, you have to realize that everyone's different and no matter what we're talking about, whether it's cannabis or any other thing that you're taking medically, you have to understand how it's going to interact with your body. Because, like, I might take NyQuil. It might react differently with me than it reacts with you or with yeah. him or her or whatever. So you just have to, uh, you have to experiment, unfortunately. And a lot of people I know, they don't like that word experiment. Right, because that freaks them out because that yeah. means there's, like, no control. Yeah, there. there's, and you just have to kind of let go. You do, and mm -hmm. that and that was something that's hard for me because I'm not, you know, I because you're a control freak. Yes, I am, and I like, you know, I, I like having, a, you know, 
you know, enough that's going to take the edge off and everything like that. But I'm not really, want, I'm not wanting to get, like, blasted on Yeah, you don't want to get obliterated yeah, on purpose. I don't get, so. Yeah, I'm it not. It could happen on accident. Oh, God, all the time. Yes. <laughs> on accident with especially edibles. Because I get these, <laughs> I make my gummy, dude. So, you make gummies? Yeah. This I, I did not know about you. Please tell us more about this oh gummy making uh, business that you know. It's not a business. I'm just yeah, this, is, <laughs> the, this experiment or whatever. Yeah, so, this experiment. I so, so, okay. First of all, I don't cook. I'm not. Mm. <laughs> don't do it. Not where my brain is. So when I make gummies, I went and I just found whatever molds I could find at like Walmart. And they were like all this big and like this thick. Wow, you be. have to do cannabis to go to Walmart. <laughs> oh, dude, I do because I, I get... No offense to people. No, no, I... I'm just, <laughs> that's just a joke. It's I, just a general, a hasty generalization <laughs> and a joke, okay? <laughs> but for, for, to my point, you know, like, yeah, I have CPTSD and PTSD too. So yeah. it's like, for me, yeah, crowds, Walmart, yeah. I can't handle. I can't, I can't. <laughs> but um, they, you know... They had some large molds, so I'm like, just grab what I could. Mm -hmm. And um, then, of course, I'm like, oh, let me make a double batch. So that's two grams mm -hmm. of uh, concentrate, mm -hmm. and I stick with indicas. Indicas are a strain. There is indicas, sativas, and mm -hmm. hybrids. So just quickly, indicas bring you down, help you sleep. Uh, sativas lift you up and help you um, stay alert and focused. And hybrids do a little bit of everything. Just depending on how heavy the, which side mm -hmm. heavy the hybrid is. It could be an indica heavy. It could be a sativa heavy. There you go. So when I was, so when I make gummies, <laughs> two grams indica. And of course I always half the time forget to double up on the jello and the gelatin and the rest of the ingredients. Yeah. So you I doubled up on the on the cannabis, but you didn't double up on the ingredients. Yeah, so that's really fun. So the ingredients were thin. Yeah. Right. So, but yeah, and when I can remember to do it, even still. So, like again, the uh, the molds I have are like this big, and they're like that thick and shit, or this long, and yeah, they're big. And um, <laughs> I'll take one, and it, it'll be like an hour. Nothing. So what do I go and do? Oh, you take another one, don't you? I, oh, or I goodness. take a half, or I'll take a sec. Yeah, I'll take another one. You gotta allow it to metabolize, man. That's the problem because with it, and it changes. It seems to change with my body every single time. But it could be the fact that I'm inconsistent with That's the ingredients. It right there. Well, no, <laughs> it could be that you're inconsistent on taking it. You know, like it, like for me, I take my RSO at the same time every, every day. day. So. My, I already know when it's going to, so like if I take it first thing in the morning, that first dose that I microdose, it's not going to hit me until two. So then all the other microdoses are going to be like, because they take about, about an hour apart. So, okay. so at two I start, three will get a little bit heavier, four will get a little bit heavier, five will get a little bit heavier, but I've already stopped microdosing at that point. Yeah. So from five until I go to sleep, I'm coming down. So, so see, now that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like always a surprise for me when I when I make gummies and I take them. I'm like, oh, yeah, in like two and a half hours, that's when it'll like kick in. Yeah. And then suddenly I'm like, oh shit, how many did I take? How long is this going to be? And I don't have any CBD. And you didn't write it down. Either. And I didn't, exactly, and I didn't write it down mm -hmm. either, so now I don't know. So you have no data to go back and <laughs> look at. No, because I'm, I'm totally blasted out of my mind. And for me, <laughs> edibles make me puke if I take too much oh, man. You have, let, let's talk about that a little bit, about okay. your, your reactions to, to cannabis, because I know last week you mentioned um, after the show last week that sometimes you'll puke, sometimes you'll, what else? Mostly just puke. Just puke? Yeah. So you and puke. Pass out. And then pass out? You yeah. puke and pass out. I puke and pass out. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. that has been mostly, 99.9% of the time was always edibles. Like when I tried it for the first time, you know, my 20s, you know, and uh, made brownies. Oh my God. People say I'm a lightweight. <laughs> it was awful. Well, dude, we didn't know about decarbol decarbolization back then. Yeah. And, or decarboxylizing, however I pronounce yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, for anyone GTS. Who there you go. Just GTS. Um, Google that shit. <laughs> Nice. So, uh, yeah, I didn't know anything about that. So we're just cramming a bunch of uh, 
a bunch of bud in the in the in the mix and mixing it up and shoving it in the oven. Yeah, no, not a good idea. Especially if you're going to be trying to drink with it too. Bad idea. Um, so I puke my guts out, and then so anytime a lot, of, so anytime, not always, but obviously, but there have been a handful of times where I've taken gummy, and it was way too much, and it it, it hits me weird because it'll be like you know suddenly I feel like oh god I gotta sit down, and then I sit down and it's like oh no. I gotta go throw up, uh-huh. and then I'm puking until I get it out, and then I'm so exhausted, and then then the sleepiness and all mm-hmm. that stuff comes on, and I have to go away and sleep for hours. So that's the one thing she, for me, for my body, that's how my body interacts yeah. with it, with with the edibles. Now, one time I had smoked recently, and uh, last week? No, no, this was a little while ago, a few weeks ago, a while ago few weeks ago, a month ago, whatever, and it was a brand new, it was like this Gandalf looking pipe, peace pipe thing, uh, and it I was, like this story already. It was brand new, brand new pipe, and um, had, and uh, <laughs> I already, I could, I already know what's going to happen. So I kept telling myself it's going to be a long <laughs> draw, gonna... it's a long draw, right? Because it's out here, and you know, it's this is, yeah. you know, so it's a long draw. So I'm getting more than I normally would. Two hits, two hits, and um, my friend and I ended up. Uh, no, he was cool. I wasn't. I, and with again, it was like ten minutes, and I'm like, and we're having a conversation, and we're standing there. I'm like, oh god, I gotta sit down. I'm like, shit, shit, shit. I know what's gonna happen next. We're still talking, and I'll, all of a sudden I pop up and go, I'm gonna puke, and I ran off into the bathroom. I was there for like an hour puking my guts out. That's the first time it ever happened smoking. It's never happened to me smoking before until then. In all these years, it was it was then whatever because it was so smooth that it was such a long draw. Yeah. Even though we each only took two hits, it was enough to bam. And that was it. So disappointed. I, I I know. I swear. Oh god, it was such a far cry from where I was last year, last summer, trying the uh, moon rocks and all that fun oh, stuff. Oh, moon rocks. Let's yeah. talk about that. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. And tell us what moon rocks are first of all. Okay, let me make sure we're still on the same page. Okay, so the moon rocks I had, I didn't know that's the, that was their name. Somebody had described it to me. But anyway, so what we had, it was, so this is what it was. It was like a blunt. Everyone knows area right, blunt is using um, like cigar paper, uh, cigar leaves to wrap it, a, a free roll, make a free gotcha. roll out of it. And But these were not tobacco leaves. These were cannabis leaves. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, so within the cannabis leaf, they put in cannabis, then they put in some keef, and yes, keef the is... Keef is the, when you grind it, all that stuff that comes out the bottom, it's the little, it's the little trichomes that come off when you grind, and that are down at the bottom of your grinder. Yeah. And then you take those... It's powdery. And it's powdery. You take yeah. those and you put them into your, on top of your cannabis, because it well, be a little bit... Don't you, don't you put dab, what dabs on it first? And then you put the key on, so it sticks do, to. You can do it that, is that way how too. They do it? Oh, okay, I was just wondering. Yeah, I didn't right. know. yeah. So, so yeah, go ahead. So the moon rocks. So yes, so, thank you. So we <laughs> have the on. we have cannabis leaf, and you have cannabis leaf. She said you have permission, but that's okay. What? So you don't need my permission. <laughs> no, what are you know, I don't want to interrupt your thought process. Uh, you're, you're too generous. Oh, too okay. generous. So and thank you. That's very kind. Of so stop it. Stop. So then once they roll that bad boy up, they dip it in concentrate, mm-hmm. then they put more keep on top of it. They have to use a glass um, filter um, so that way you don't waste anything. Gotcha. And all of the uh, concentrate and keep comes all the way back to where the filter is. And it even goes a little bit on that glass filter. And did I get every all the ingredients I think in there? So. Dude. You take a hit off of that, oh my god, you're in a whole nother dimension. Like, he didn't know existed. And and I have to say, that never made me puke or anything like that. Nice, oh, quite a bit of those last yeah, year. Did you? Nice. They were awesome. And, uh, yeah, they were they were amazing. I mean, it really was, it, 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 it kind of, you know, what? It, it was like, <laughs> it was like canvas on steroids. No, but it, what it did was, yeah. it just 
it, it not just intensified so much, but it was like more balanced and mm. even, at least it were, was for, for me. Yeah. yeah. It kept me more balanced and even just you just smoking that. Um, that's were you stuff. functional? Oh yeah. Yeah. I could function. I could mm. do everything. And Good. because that's one of the reasons why I don't like doing too much. Cause if I can't function, I freak out. Sorry. I'm not going to be able to function. Yeah, definitely. Be productive. So that's what, uh, the, that was my experience with moon rocks. And that was my experience with, uh, just, so everyone has a point of reference of how cannabis works for me. If I take edibles or anything, yeah, I'm, I gotta be careful. Except for the moon rocks. Except for the moon rocks. Moon rocks. Yeah, maybe the moon rocks are your thing. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. maybe that's your jam. Huh? Maybe that's what I need to stick with. But yeah. So, um, anyway. So, go ahead. What, what started you on do, doing cannabis? Was it recreational at first? Or, and then it turned into something else? Or was it to treat something? Or, like, what was your. What, what, give us the history of, like, your your workings and dealings with this plant. Okay, so, uh, so um, like most of us, when we're in our 20s, early 20s and stuff, or earlier for other people, um, it was me, um, once I started working in broadcast, broadcasting um, and everything, then I started to experiment. Because, yeah, my goal was success, success, work, 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 work. And then I was able to, you know, like, okay, let me have some fun now. So in, um, in my early 20s, it was. It was about... Um, uh, self-medicating because working in uh, radio, I you know had to be up at three in the morning and be at work at a certain time, you know, and all of that. But I always had problems sleeping, and I had I had other health issues still going on that I were not uh, diagnosed yet, and so that's why I started smoking and uh, using cannabis because I found that it helped. As um, then I stopped for a long time, and then again in my late thirties I started. I have a lot of chronic pain, um, but I had an injury and a couple injuries and uh, it made the pain unbelievable. And it was just, I couldn't function. Couldn't smoke because it wasn't legal. So that left me with one choice and that is narcotics mm -hmm. and something I never wanted to do. But um, with the health issues that I've had, um, I've had to you know, go, be on and off of them from time to time just to deal with the pain so I can at least try to function. Yeah. But that wasn't the way I wanted to go because those things, you know, get you hooked and get you, you know, and, and will kill you if you take too much of them. And, and that's where, you know, the opiate amp epidemic is. Um, you know, for me, I started researching more and learning about natural medicines that could help me for pain. That's how I discovered Kratom. Okay. Cause I had tried going from, uh, um, from like the opiates straight to uh, straight to cannabis, but it wasn't working. Here was the reason why, at least for my body. But mm -hmm. um, with, um, as we discussed, uh, cannabis, you have CBD receptors in your brain. You also have opiate receptors in your brain. So the opiates attach to the opiate receptors and cannabis attaches to the cannabis receptors. Mm -hmm. So the difference was me going straight from the opiates that left the opiate receptors empty mm -hmm. even though the cannabis ones were getting filled the opiate receptors were stronger for me and they weren't being dealt with so what i ended up needing so what i had to do is when i discovered kratom kratom does attach to your opiate receptors okay. but what it does it doesn't have the it doesn't have the effects that opiates do you there is no a withdrawal that i found i never found a withdrawal um, there wasn't anything with that. The one thing you have to be careful with, of course, like any, any Medicaid, anything is with Kratom that can cause an overdose because it does attach to your opiate receptors. Okay. So that's what I had to do. That was the transition for me. And then I was able to get that go to cannabis from the Kratom. Um, and that's how it works. So that's how I uh, started. That's how I became a cannabis patient and not just for physical pain, but for emotional um, stuff as well, uh, as we discussed last week, and um, it's been a huge help for me in, you know, relaxing my brain, relaxing my body, helping me focus, helping me function, because I'm not all drugged up with a bunch of, you know, pharmaceuticals that aren't going to work with my body anyways. Already, I'm in that one percentile where I'm allergic to, like, I have bad reactions to almost every pharmaceutical, so the less I need to take, the better. 
that's how I got into the cannabis thing. And it, you know, and again, it really started be with the pain, the chronic pain and um, all the post-traumatic stuff. So those were the two things that led me to become a cannabis patient. How about yourself? Oh, man. Mine's a long journey. I don't think we, we have time to get into it. Good God. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought mine was long. Damn, dude. So, um, younger, I was straight edge. And I didn't drink nothing. I was an yeah. athlete, so I didn't want to jeopardize good. anything or anything. You know. um, I didn't try it until I was 18 in college. With uh, I was a catcher. Okay. In college, um, right. so I had the uh, I had the whole um, pitching staff to deal with, and they were all from Canada. Oh, so wow! It's a different culture in Canada, right. right? Where cannabis is just like, you know, you go to the general store and you know you can pick up a jar of cannabis, right? Oh my God! I so, <laughs> so uh, they they kind of got me onto that because I had started drinking when I was when I got to college my freshman year because I was. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but it's a lot of pressure being a freshman, you know, a starter and going out there and having to perform all the time, right? So it it's is. a little pressure. So I, I was drinking. Drinking was my escape at that time. So, yeah, so I was straight edge up until that point. And then um, they introduced me to cannabis, blunts, shotgunning me with a blunt. Oh, it's yeah. like a shotgun is. Okay, so that's where you turn it around. And you blow it out the back and the other person has the other end in their mouth. You did that on purpose. Yeah, I did. Okay, so. But you, um, you brought it up, you, like, you walked right into that <laughs> yeah, one Yeah, I did, I did, yeah. So anyways, yeah, yeah, so anyway, so, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot, so. Really? Uh, yeah. I can't I imagine. That's yeah, awesome. I enjoyed it a lot, so. Um, I, I was doing it all the time. Um, like if I knew I wasn't playing that day and um, a pitcher knew that he wasn't pitching that day, we would like take a walk. Yeah. And, you know, and then come back. And, Get your yeah, because we were on bullpen or whatever. Yeah. Know, for that game, it was like, oh, we can do this. You know. So that was, so at first it was, <laughs> it was just recreational. I enjoyed it a lot and I did it just to get high. And then, um, after that, I joined the military, um, and I was back to being straight edge again. Uh, I missed it. I mean, every time I talked about getting out of the military, I said, man, I'm going to roll me a blunt as I'm driving off the base. So is that how it happened? No, it didn't, unfortunately, because, I mean, I didn't know how to get it. So, um, But, yeah, so that's how it was for a while, and then I guess I started back up. I didn't do anything. So that was about uh, 1996. Not about. It was it was May 1996, um, and then all the way until uh, 2009, January 2009. I didn't do any cannabis. Okay. And then, I in between that, I did a tour in Iraq, um, and they had me on painkillers. They had me on. What was it SS serotonin? SSRIs. Yeah, that yeah. was. Um, I was on like six different things, and one day I think it was 2010. I was just had a moment of no, it was longer than that. 10, 11, 12. It was more like 2012, 2013, where I couldn't remember that time frame from 2009. Well, actually, probably earlier than that. Probably from 2006 to. 2011 or 12 where I didn't remember anything like it was really? blank wow like I didn't I, I think I knew things but did now this is from all the pharmaceuticals that they had me on right and I had a moment where I had gotten out of the showers I looked at myself in the mirror and I was just like it's the pills like it just hit me I'm like it's the pills and I was just like I'm just gonna stop the pills and it was at that time when like all this research was coming out about cannabis and how you know People were using cannabis to get off, you know, of addictive, you know, uh, pharmaceuticals or, you know, heroin, you know, what, and any other addictive uh, drugs out there. They were using cannabis. And then I found um, a doctor in Orlando who 
wrote a book on a cannabinoid system, and that was the first time I had ever really? heard of the cannabinoid system. So like I'm 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 deep down a rabbit hole, and I'm like I was up for like three or four days wow. just like researching all this stuff. I was like, that's it. I'm gonna start doing that. So I got rid of all my pills, cold turkey, didn't care. Good for you. Just threw it all away, and I started using cannabis as my therapy. And um, my pain, obviously, it's an anti-inflammatory, so my pain went away almost instant, almost every time I ingested it. But I was smoking it at that time. So it, it didn't last long. It only lasted a couple of hours. So then um, I heard about this guy in Canada called Rick Simpson and um, how he makes Rick Simpson oil and all that stuff. And it's about the time when Florida was starting to say, yeah, you can be a medical patient and, you know, that, that whole boat was going through and all that stuff. And I was just like, okay, cool. So when it finally went through, I got my card and uh, not all of the dispensaries here in Florida were carrying RSO. There was only one company. I'm not gonna name them. Yeah. But there was only one company at the time carrying RSO, so I had to buy through them. And as soon as I got that, that like changed my life too, because at the time I was having health issues. I was really overweight. Um, they, I, they were, it was possible cancer that they thought I might oh have. My God. So it was like all this stuff. So like I did a whole lifestyle, another whole lifestyle change. Right. So it went from the pharmaceuticals to getting rid of those to smoking cannabis to this RSO stuff and then now changing every because it's not just one thing for right. health, right? Right. It's never just one thing. So that that's another thing that I had to learn too is you know diet and all that. And that's that'll be another show. But um so ingesting it, the RSO is, you know, it, it does something different to your body as opposed to smoking it. Right. right? So what it does is when you ingest it and you metabolize it, your brain automatically sends it where it needs to go through the cannabinoid system. Yeah. It sends it to whatever receptor it needs to send it to, to start healing that part of the body. So, uh, with the lifestyle change of cannabis and vitamins, minerals, changing my diet, all that stuff. I went to a plant-based diet. I know a lot of people are like, oh, no carnivore diet, whatever. But this is what works for my physiology. So I did. I made all those changes, and I lost. I, I went from almost three hundred pounds, and now I'm down to what was like two fifteen today. Um, oh, congratulations! Um, all the stuff that they found in my chest and in my lymph nodes, and all that stuff that they thought was on the scans and stuff, all that went away. That's amazing. So. That's how cannabis has helped me. And that's been my cannabis journey. And even today, even though I'm healthy now and all that good stuff, I still take cannabis with my diet. With the, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. That's, that's it now. That's what I do. And that's what I'm going to do until my last breath. It's, this is how I'm going to eat. This is the medicine I'm going to, the natural medicine that I'm going to take. I'm not going to take the, the pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. So that's my cannabis journey for me. Is um, it saved my life basically because right. the psychedelics were killing me. I think that's what caused me to gain all the weight. And if you have all that extra weight, you're going to have all that extra inflammation. If you have yep. all that extra inflammation, now your body's, you know, it's it's just it was crazy. But yeah, that that was my journey. Just a quick summary. Of, no, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, you know. You know. And I'm sure most of you have journeys of your own. So please share them with yeah. us. We'd like to. You know, we, you know, we'd like to interact with you. You can just go ahead and, uh, you know, you know, post a comment uh, on Facebook. There, we should be able to see it. Um, and of course, like, follow, share us. We'll follow you back. Like, follow, share you back. Yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, we're. Uh, where do I want to go? Oh shit! Here it goes again. Oh, did you do it again, dude? It's number amazing. one. Let's write it down. It's the first one. <laughs> let's keep tabs. Let's keep tabs. Yes. How many times Jules loses, loses her train of thought? Loses train of thought. Number one train of oh shit. Market. Oh shit. shit. Oh, wow, I figured it out. Number one. And you guys keep count at home as well. Yeah, we'll make that a contest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, we need to make that a contest. contest. Yes. How many times did Jules never lose uh, yeah. lose track? Lose track of what she's trying to say. So. um so we're talking about our journeys. Mm -hmm. 
So where were you going to go with it from there? Because I have no clue. I know where I want to go in the second hour. Oh, I want to go to like funny shit. You know, I want to go into like those type of stories. Because I know, I know you got, I know every day you probably got, so you 365, 24-7, you got stories, right? I think I shared most of them. (laughs) Did you really? No, you didn't. No. But yeah, so if you guys got any funny stories in the second hour, man, like throw those down there. So just, just, I wanted to go back for a second because I I neglected to mention it. Something, um, there is, if you, if never heard of them normal um and it's the That's right, yes. national oh god i can't think of the acronym but anyways or i know the acronym i can't think of the full words uh normal n-o-r-m-l it's been around for 52 years um they have been researching the cannabis plant for that long they have found um it has never killed a person oh no that, in the history of, of, of cannabis of of recorded time. time it is never zero deaths zero okay. deaths and i think it's important to add that because when you're talking pharmaceuticals and all that other shit that doctors force on you yeah that shit will kill you but like i said my body doesn't handle it well yeah. so i have allergic re- horrible bad reactions all the time um but with cannabis no one has you, ever you just think about tylenol yeah, exactly. If you take too much Tylenol, that's going to be the last headache you ever have. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's one way to get rid of it. It's just, <laughs> but with cannabis, I mean, you could, you could, the, the worst that's going to happen is you're going to get hungry, you're going to go to sleep, and you might freak out a little bit, but. You might puke. Yeah, you might puke or whatever, but I mean, that's, you're still in, you're technically kind of still in control, you know, like right. you, you, you might feel like you're going to die, but you're not going to. You know, you know why? Because zero people died from it. No, and yeah, and, and so it's the plan has been researched by scientists and medical professionals. Everybody, everybody in the world has researched this plant. If there is, there are only positives to it. And the leaf, the, the actual leaf, can be found in like ancient Egypt. You know, like, mm-hmm. and there's there's re- recordings of like how they used the plant. You know, so it's not like it's something that's new. New. It's this is we're going back thousands of years. Now, so. There was even someone uh, that I guess uh, 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 someone had found in the Bible, uh, uh, a reverend or pastor, someone who had found read in the Bible found that cannabis was actually in there, but it was the way it was interpreted. Mm-hmm. That it, no one knew what the word was. Oh, uh, gotcha. So once this this guy he started going through doing all the research and everything, and again, word at etymology like we discussed, yep. he found he 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 figured it out. Mm-hmm. He found out what it was, and it it is cannabis that is in there, and it's um, again going back to it's a miracle plant yeah, for everything. Um, and shit, number two. It's a, it's a miracle plant for everything, he said. I don't know if it's a miracle plant for everything. I, mean, I, think, I don't know. Overall, I think, well, it, yeah, I guess. Good point. You have, I can't really say that. You're right. It's, does, does, it's it work, a, does it work for toe fungus? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Well, if one of us gets toe fungus, we, okay. can, we, can, we, can, we can track that. In about three that. or four years. Right? <laughs> God, we'll do one of that. <laughs> then we can track that. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, anyway, so... Just so people who are learning now, there are, it's been researched to death. It's the one thing. There's no reason on earth that everyone can't have access to this yeah. plant. So if you want to. If you want to, yeah, yes. If you want to. If you want to. It's not, it's yeah. not, it shouldn't be like, even, it shouldn't even be like how pharmaceuticals are. Well, this is all we have to treat whatever you Right. You know, so you have to pick one of these. You know, it's, it, it shouldn't be like that. If you want to take pharmaceuticals, you take pharmaceuticals. If you want to take plants... And be on a natural, you know, medicinal, you know, with no side effects. Yeah, for the most part, for the most part, no side effects. You, know, you might get lightheaded, you might yeah. puke. I mean, but you're not. I don't know. I've never, I've never been around people, and I've been around some gangsters too. I've never been around people who have smoked weed and been like, "Yo, man, let's go shoot some people." You know, oh, right, yo, right let, let's go rob, let's go rob a bank, let's go do violence to people. Like I've never been around anyone that's done that, unless it had something else in it. You know what yeah, I mean? Right, like right, if right. it wasn't just cannabis. Yeah, yeah. I've never known anybody be like, yo, man, let's go shoot that dude. 
<laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> that is an excellent point. That is yeah. something I bring up too. I and I forgot. I'm glad you brought it up. It's something I normally say too. If everyone, if the whole world started smoking pot, yeah. all <laughs> Doritos, Pizza Hut, Domino's, <laughs> Taco Bell. all those guys are going to be, you know, and Taco Bell delivers too. I think Burger King delivers now too. I don't understand why the fast food industry doesn't doesn't back Jump it. Jump on it, right? exactly, because that's where they, that's what's going to happen. Nobody's going to be like I said. Nobody's nobody wants to. Gordita sales will go through the roof. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you. <laughs> Nobody wants to go out. All you want to do is chill, yep. be fun, and be cool, hang with out, and hang talk out. with people, yeah, and be a, philosophical, intellectual, yeah. right, and creative. Creative. Yeah. yeah, and and then you want to sit down and eat a pizza. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the worst. That's the worst. The worst. <laughs> well, I mean, you could trip and fall and hit your head and possibly die, but you know, <laughs> that I'm, I'm thinking anywhere. worst. I'm thinking worst case scenario. Yeah, I mean, I could stand up right now and fall down. Well, I, mean, I, I did that how many times last week? Well, I don't know. Yeah, cause oh, I mean, we got to start keeping count of that, too. Oh, so, God. Yeah. Or how many times I fall? Yeah, that's a whole new thing. Yeah, that's we gotta do because I can't Well, that was me. before you even spoke anything. Yeah, that's right. You were just walking to the car. You're like, boom. I was like, ooh. That looked like a hurt. Nah, yeah. No, nah, I'm just clumsy. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but whatever. I'm going to go with that for now. That yeah. was it. So, but anyway, like, it, it changes your mood, man. Like you don't want to, you don't want to do dumb shit. <laughs> no, you, you want to be. Productive. In my experience, and I've only been around not a lot of people in my lifetime, but I can say one hundred percent of the people I've been around, nobody wants to do violence when they're high on cannabis. Dude. No. See, that's why I think would save the nobody, world. Nobody, no one. Oh. See, yeah. that's why I think would save the world. If everyone smoked, nobody there. Like war daytime, would, like daytime, right? Right, right. Yeah. Well, war would be done, <laughs> right? There would be because everyone's just smoking. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's talk now. Four twenty, man. Everybody just <laughs> just takes a little toke, man. Relax, <laughs> reflect upon the day. You know, <laughs> it gives you perspective. Yes, definitely. It gives you the ability. Sit with your boys and girls and just chill and yeah, just and have a good time. And then you're picking up. And That's the true happy about. hour. That is the true happy hour. Absolutely. Just saying. Yeah. And then it's time to munch and <laughs> yeah, eat, eat and, and go to sleep. Go to sleep, watch a movie, whatever. Do it again tomorrow. And do it again tomorrow. Exactly. That's a great point. Yeah. Um, I think it helps with the mundane. For me, anyway. Does it? Like mundane tasks. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Like if, mm -hmm. I'm like, hold on, let me go do this real quick. And then come back and it's like, okay, I can get through this. No problem. You know? I used to clean like crazy uh, when yeah. I smoked. When, you know, when I was smoking, I smoke, and then man, suddenly all of a sudden I want to go clean. I clean the entire house, and then I could go back and go work on music, because nice. that's how it worked for me. You know, yeah. I got the stuff that I needed to do. Like I said, the you needed your environment yeah. a certain way, and then exactly. you went to create. You know. Exactly, yeah. and gotcha. so that's what it helped me do. It helped me focus from that to that. Um, yeah, and you know, these days, you know, I've, I've got, I have, you know, like daily migraines. It has helped more with migraines than, of course, anything. And it's crazy because I'll sit there because I'll be working on something. And even though I have a migraine, you know, I'll try the migraine meds or whatever. And, you know, some of them help, most of them don't. And they don't last very long. But, um, you know, I can, like, focus on what I'm doing. But then it gets to the point where it's just pain, pain, pain. And I can't distract myself. It, there's, it's just yeah. taking up everything. And... Um, and, you know, and, and again, since I smoke Indica's, then, you know, I always, there's always a fear that, oh, no, I'm not going to be productive now because I just smoked or whatever. But I got to tell you, when I'm struggling like that, and I'll sit there and just keep struggling and struggling, and then it'll finally dawn on me, dude, just take a couple puffs. Yeah. Take a couple puffs, migraine, obliterated. I may not be able to go back and get more work done just for the reason because of how it all interacts yeah. because the migraine was draining and everything. So I made, so I lay down and sleep or rest, but the, you know, the headache's gone. It's and it's, I'm what taking, like, I have to alternate because I have them daily. I have to alternate four medications, no wait, three medications mm -hmm. every day, every other day. And then there was a monthly that I take. So that's four different medications a month for Migraines when cannabis. So you migraines on your monthly? No. <laughs> oh, I thought that's what you meant. My bad. Oh, my bad. Sorry. My no, fault. I meant there's a monthly injectable medication oh, sure. you take for them. 
So uh, thank you for making. Thank you for specifying. So um, in, man. so I uh, yeah. So anyways, between all that, it, 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 when I and, and I'm really bad about stuff like that. Like I'm bad about stuff like what taking like. Taking like meds, knowing that they're going to work and, and, and stuff like that, because gotcha. my brain starts going to this place like, oh no, now I can't be productive, or I got this to do, or I got that to do, or I got blah 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 blah, and I gotta. Is that be part of the problem? It is, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm working to fix that <laughs> because it is a part. That's of the good that you're actually working to fix that. So. Oh God, I'm working to fix everything every single day. That's just my life. Everything has to. Be but that's fixed. everybody's yeah. life. Right? No, Come on. No, we're always so. working to make ourselves better. Yeah, that's true. We that's are. what I do, man. Yes, you that's do. That's what you do. Yeah, every day. Every day. The people I try and surround myself, that's what they do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Always so. try to surround myself with people who are better than me in some way or form so I can learn from them. And look yeah. So. I, I surround myself around people that ingest cannabis because they're just more fun. <laughs> it's better conversation. That is true. That's just, that's just me. That's better what I mean. conversation, better everything. Better everything. Like for the most part, yeah. God, food tastes like, oh, right. Yeah. Food tastes way better. Everything tastes way better. Everything. That's like, um, what is that? Uh, Half baked. Oh they my God, that, I love that. They thing. had that that bit where it's just like, do you ever notice that everything that you do is better on me? It's just like, yeah. yes. As a matter of fact, you are correct. No, you just. <laughs> you just enhanced freaking senses and all that good stuff. But yeah. It, so. it kind of clears out your brain. It clears yeah, the shit out of your does. brain. That's always how I put it. It clears the shit out of your brain and it gives you the ability to move forward and, and be productive and be creative and everything. All the things you want to do and it helps bring out, you know, talents or like you said, it, it, it emphasizes everything. Yes, so. it does. But it also, it will enhance... Like when you're going into it, whatever your mood is, it will mm, enhance it a little bit. Not like like if you think about killing somebody, that's not that's gonna that's not gonna happen. But what I'm saying is, it's like if you ingest too much, and let's say you're depressed right before you do it, that's gonna enhance a little bit. So your experience is gonna be a depressing experience. Not like a really bad depression. It's just gonna be a depressing experience. Where the last time you were happy when you went into it because you were around a bunch of happy people and you just had a better experience. So, you know, you just have to figure out uh, your mindset before you do it. Like, you don't want to do it like right after work because you probably depressed. Yeah, and all that stuff. You just want to do it like at the right time, be in the right mind frame too. Yeah. If you're doing it recreationally, you know, if you're doing it for, for medical purposes and stuff, just figure out what your dosage is and just stick with the dosage. That's just advice. There's no science behind that. That's just experience. So, like, again, you have to experiment. So. Yeah, and it's and you're safe doing it. You just like again, go start low, go slow, and yeah. you get to where you need to be. Like, don't go to. A, do they still do raids? I don't know. Do they have those oh my god, we're yeah, cool. we're we're we're, we're Xers, man. So, like, don't you don't want to go to like a. <laughs> like that oh kind God. of that kind of environment, like you know what I mean. Like you want to be, you want to be in a nice, comfortable environment. You, you do. You want to have a couch. You want to have. You want oh, you got to make sure Netflix. you have snack, snack, snack snack oh, okay, Netflix, Netflix, snacks. You, want, you need snacks. Definitely. You got to have and and again, pizza, good people, every yeah. taco, on speed, on speed, speed dial, dial. yeah, yeah. Uber eats, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. your kids are doing. So nowadays. that's your that's <laughs> so that's your preparation right there yep. is couch, phone, movies. To, you're yeah. good. Then you smoke and you enjoy yourself. You can relax. Yeah, definitely. So we're coming up now to the top of uh, hour one here, mm -hmm. and let's see. Let's check. So I have lost my train of thought twice, twice. now. I haven't fallen yet because I'm sitting in a chair. But that can change. Twice in three minutes. Shut up. No, it wasn't. <gasps> yes, it was. It was. Oh, man. That's bad. All that's right. Horrible, Anyways, man. we'll keep track. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's wrong with you? I don't know. And I did take a couple puffs beforehand. You would think that. Uh, no. No. I don't, last think, week, yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, You're, it's this thing with my brain. It is. 
you know, your brain. It only started, you know what, to be honest with you, it started, it actually did start in therapy. That's what I realized after therapy? last week. You go to therapy? Yeah. Why do you go to therapy? Um, <sighs> We're just playing. We're just playing. That's another, that's a whole other. We, and if you want to, you that's can. A, that's a, med, that's when we talk about mental health. That's yeah, that's what we, and we had, and we started up the show debut last week. You can find that episode on Facebook as well. Um, with, a uh, uh, with. I was talking about mental health and specifically uh, PTSD, CPTSD, and which we go in there. Yeah, we're both participants in. Yeah, it's fun. It is fun, right? Yeah, I like just messing with my therapist. <laughs> Please tell me how you do that. Yes, I just walk in and be like, what's up? And they're like, well, what happened the last week? Absolutely fucking nothing. What are we going to talk about today? You know? Like, Stuff like that, or you know, I felt like closed. <laughs> okay, tell me. So there was this one there. time. One time. One time at band camp. Yep. So we were down at uh, what's it called now? It was called Downtown Disney. Disney Springs? Is that what it's called now? Don't look at me. I'm not a Disney person. Yeah, whatever. No it's, we're, it's Downtown Disney, Disney Springs, whatever they're calling it now. And there's a Lego store there, and it was. Like in the height of the summer, just kids just running around. Man, you know what thought went into my head? Please tell. <laughs> I was like, nobody would notice if I just ran right down the middle of the store and just clotheslined all these kids, right? And I said, oh my gosh. So, I mean, that's, those are the things that I tell my therapist. Dude, that's just awesome. To, just to mess with me, you know. And I just want to say, shout out, Robert Wegman, my bro, my friend, my pal. How are you, my friend? Miss you. Thank you for watching. What up? Mr. Robert Wegman is an artist and a killer musician as well. So, uh, hey, what's up? Thank you for joining us. Long time no talk. Great to see you. Uh... Robert, do you have anything you would, you would like to share with us? If any experiences with what we're discussing today's topic of cannabis and plant beds? If you do, go ahead and uh, post them in there, and I'll uh, we'll talk about them. So, uh, again, everyone, you can post your questions, say hi, whatever. Just uh, you can do it there on Facebook, and we'll get them. We'll respond to you right away. Um, God. Is that number three? Write it down. Number three. <laughs> no, that was. Was it number three? Yeah, that's number three right I there. That was number four. Oh my yeah, god, I can't even keep track of the numbers. You can't even keep track of the numbers. Oh my god. So anyway, yeah, so back to my okay. that originally started in no, write it down first before you I forget. Did. Okay. I did. That I that originally started in therapy is when I noticed like uh, we'd be talk I, I would, you know, my therapist and I would be talking and then <laughs> suddenly whatever it would start. Uh -huh. That's when it started. And now, obviously, it's expanded out. So I don't know. So I'm not sure if it's a PTSD thing or <laughs> something else. Oh, I got a question. Oh, go ahead. Have I'm you ever answer. gone to therapy, like, right before, in the car, and just be like, <sighs> and then, like, go into to session? Yeah? Let me tell you, they're far more productive. Yes, I definitely. Yeah, that's what I was going to, that was going to be my follow-up. Far more productive. Yeah. I, I'm able to... Think clearer. I'm able to express okay. myself clearer, more clearly. Mm -hmm. I'm able to get to things instead of you know, especially with trauma, we have to dig through all this stuff to get to the stuff at the bottom yes. to be able to talk about it. And it takes forever, and it's really frustrating because you want so much, and then you get flooded, and then you can't say anything, and your brain is just overloaded. So I noticed when I when I would go in after um, smoking, then I. Again, I, I didn't have shit. whatever issues I was having when I put it. <laughs> Is that I, four? No, I found it. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Digging through. Yeah, I didn't good, have to dig through so much. Good recovery. Have to, <laughs> thank you. Yes. I didn't have to dig through so much because my, because my brain was, because I was able to cut right to the chest. Yeah, you were able to, to pull it. Yes, out because of your head quicker. Yeah. again, well, cannabis yeah. it obliterates the shit in your head. Yeah. So that's that's I yeah I found you know it gets rid of the noise, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's, it gets rid of the really noise awesome. and all the crap there that just bogs you down, and it's just. Da, 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 da. And again, this is our experiences. Mm -hmm. You might have a different experience. We if you have a different, yes, absolutely. If you have a different experience, just uh, go ahead and hit us up on, in the comments, and we'll. we'll 
get right back to you. Yeah, and well, uh, once you go live. give you a shout out and shout out, all the good stuff. read your comment and, and embarrass about. you and all that good stuff, man. But it'd be fun. Yeah, we had some fun ideas that we were coming up with last week that we wanted. It's, it, it, While it's we were on cannabis. <laughs> While we exactly, because that's when the best ideas come up. Because <laughs> you're free to think like that. Free! Yes. You're free! Yes, it opens up your brain. So, yeah, we have some of those things planned. We're going to be working into the show, and that's going to be fun. And a reminder to everybody, come down and see and hang with us live. We want we want to meet you. We want to get you guys on the show. Everybody, this is a participant. All participatory all the way around. Yeah, we're at definitely. Grassroots Kava every Wednesday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. We're here in Ybor City, Grassroots Kava. Come on down, have some kava, hang with us. And they got a lot of good stuff here. They do. Yeah, they got a lot of good food, a lot of good snacks, a lot of good drinks, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, all, whatever you want, man. Come on down and check it out. It's a great atmosphere, good ambiance, all that good stuff, man. So. Yeah, definitely. So please do. Um, and the okay. staff and crew is amazing. Here. Oh God, they That's are. Something. They are really great. They're on top of everything. They're friendly. They're, I mean, it's more like pets are allowed too, right? Yep. Pet, yeah. There was a there's a cat running around. I know that. Yep. And before um, earlier when I got here, there was a there was a dog in here too, and that was wonderful. Yeah. They have water for your pets, and yep. it's great. And roosters. So, really um, good. Roosters are plenty around here in Ebor. So. Oh my God. What's the story with the roosters? I know there is one. I don't remember it though. Of course. Why would I remember? How would I know? I don't know. I thought you might remember. Yeah, no, I don't know anything. I don't even know why I'm here. Do you know where you are? <laughs> yes, I know. Right, so I know exactly where I'm at. I'm in Florida. <laughs> Way to <laughs> just yeah, narrow it down there, buddy. That's right. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, so some of the some <laughs> some of the crazy out. things that you think of when you're high, man. No, that like, was another thing. That was yeah. another bit. Well, that's, doing, that's like we want to do like a weekly bit, right? Right, right. Yeah. What, what do you think about when you're high? What you stupid do things I think about when I'm high. But they're not usually. But stupid. they're not stupid now. No, they actually become. And it's one of those. And I only ask you because I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. The person who put can't it, remember jack it, shit. Put it all on you, dude. Yeah, the person who can't remember. I'm trying to help you. This is my therapy. So, <laughs> ready? True. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Uh, where was I? Yeah, exactly. Number four. Number four. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I think about flying cars a lot. Do you? Yeah. When you're when you're hot. Yeah. Like how to create like, them? Yes. Really? Like, do you like, write it down? What would it look like? Do you write it down? Sometimes I do, but then I forget where I wrote them down. <laughs> Yeah. Like which notebook did I put that in? Flying cars. I gotta file that under F. And you put that in the safe place, right? Because yes, you know the, it's safe. Yes, you never like, lose it. I will remember. I have to remember that I put that there, and then I never remember where I put it. it, it it's fun, and that's the other thing I've noticed too. Like you know, after you know when <laughs> after smoking, it's like everything makes more sense. But then when I'm but the execution <laughs> is just like right. But but it's like afterwards. Everything that made sense to me when I was when I after I smoked and, and, and when I'm not yeah. doesn't make sense anymore. And I'm totally yeah, it doesn't. I'm like and then I'm like, oh my god, I'm a genius on you know with cannabis because yeah. I'm like, holy shit, look how smart I am. I wrote that, uh -huh. I did this, I played the, all this stuff, I came up with that idea. Ooh, that's I'm a like, good point. God, I'm so fucking awesome. Yes. And then <laughs> and then it's like, oh shit, what was my last thought? Even though I took a couple puffs before before we started, do, do you do do you do that a lot? Like do go what? back and like you write something down, like um, I don't know, like oh this was an amazing story. Let me write it for me anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like, I like to write stories. I used to. Do and when I recall it after the fact, like a week or two later, I'm just like who the fuck wrote this shit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. Exactly. And it's it's either or. It's, there's no in between. It's either like this is genius or this is the most stupid shit I've ever read really? in my life. Yeah. Sometimes I, no. I I have a bad session where it's just like what this doesn't even make sense. Like this is like the compound sentence or you know it's an incomplete sentence or it's just like a word. Like why did I write, write that word? So like I'm trying to figure out what the heck. Was I thinking? So do you get high again and then go back? If you smoke again, then have I done that, that before? Yeah. I have, and I, I'm still. Like, really? I don't know why. Like I, I, the stuff that I don't like is where I just write a word. 
Really? Yeah, and it's just like, why did I write that word? Well, it had its significance and importance at the time. Yeah, but like you, you're on number four. I don't even know why. <laughs> no. That's so. just the most... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, but for me, it's... I've, I've never upset... Yeah, I've never found something that was like... You know that made me like, oh my god, why would I do that? Yeah. Right, but but you know, like recording music, anything like that. I'm like, oh my god, did I just write that? Yeah. Like I wrote it like off the top of my head, and you know, it takes going back the next day. You know, it, it was you know before I smoke or whatever, and then and listening to him like, oh my god, really did I write that? And I'm like so proud of myself. Yeah. But yeah. You well, know, most of the time I'm like that, but yeah. sometimes it's just like, ugh. Really? I don't know what I was thinking. What was my friend on mind or anything like that? Like, yeah, nothing. Huh. All right, funny stories then. Give us some, uh, let's do some funny stories. I mean, aside from things the that, by the, yeah, the things ones that, I, I I'll start if you want. Yay, okay. thank you. Okay, so going back to what I was talking about in college. So um, we already established that um, when, <laughs> when I was a freshman in college and I was catching, um, the games where I didn't have to, or I thought I wasn't going to play. Yeah. We would, we would smoke out. Yeah. Right? Me and another pitcher, or, you know, we knew we weren't getting in the game. So right. we were just like, we're just going to go for a walk and smoke, right? All right, so we're playing South Carolina in the Gamecocks. Um, Division One school playing against these guys. It's a big deal for us because we're an NAIA school. So it's like. And what's that not, again? It's not as recognized as the NCAA. Okay. So um, yeah, everybody knows who, you know, the Gamecocks are. So anyway, so we're playing. We're playing them. Was it South Carolina? Who are we playing? Wait a minute. No, now I don't even remember who we playing. Oh, that's All one for you. Yeah, that's one for me. One for. But anyway, it, it was a Division One school. Like it was, it was one of the only Division One schools on our, on our, um, on our schedule that year. So I knew I wasn't getting in the play. So I knew I was going to be in the bullpen. And then there was another freshman pitcher that was like, yeah, he's like, let's just, let's just go. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So first I got to tell you, my college coach was a mean son of a bitch. Okay. Right? And he didn't know how to say Raul. He called me Rolo. Wait, yes. wait, wait, wait. He called me Rolo. Why? How does he not know how to say Rolo? I don't know. He's... I don't know, maybe he was just being a dick because that he was one, but like I don't know. That's so anyway, <laughs> so it's me and this other guy, I'm not going to name who it is just in case they're no, watching. Wow. So um, <laughs> we'll call him Brad. <laughs> oh no, yeah, let's start coming up with names. We'll, we'll call, call him that. Brad, yeah, I'm not going to remember this tomorrow. So, <laughs> um, so me and Brad <laughs> are sitting in the bullpen and we, we smoked a blunt between the two oh, of us. Shit. So we're both like this. We're not even watching the game, dude. We're just like this, right? And then all we hear from the dugout, Rolo, Brad, start warming up. And I'm just like, I looked at him. I looked at him, Brad. I looked at Brad and I was like, dude, <laughs> you got to go in. There's no way I'm going in, right? So he starts warming up and I'm, he's throwing. And he, he threw mid to upper 90s. Wow. I'm having trouble catching the fucking ball. I'm just like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do, man? I was like, hey, man, I'm trying. I said, but when you get out there, he's going to catch it, I promise. <laughs> so warms up, and toward the end, I'm like, okay, now I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting into it. I'm getting my faculties about me. So then um, he's like, hey, you guys are in. I was like, oh, shit. Did I just hear him say, you guys are in? And then he just goes like this to me, taps me with his glove on his butt, and he's like, let's go. And then he just start giggling, and I'm running out there, and I'm just like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Against the Division One NCAA team, right? And I'm like, oh, shit, oh, shit. This is like the moment that you, you want, right? right? And I'm fucking high. So I get back behind the plate, taking the warm-ups, and I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. And the umpire gets back behind me. He's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, why? He was like, you're still on your knees. You haven't even gotten in your squat position. I was like, no, that's just how I warm up. I didn't even realize, like, I was just, like, nonchalantly just catching, like, one of the biggest moments in my in my baseball career. And I'm just like, yeah. So anyway, two innings. 
and then the game was over, and we did just fine. Now we got to drive from there all the way back to Georgia. Oh, no. And it's like, me and him are in the back seat. I'm like, how the hell did we fucking pull that shit off, dude? Like, how did we pull that off? Oh, and I got two hits that night, too. Oh, yeah. It works. You so, were, you, how it was like, football? I guess you could say that. <laughs> but that's just like one of those crazy moments, you know, that you have when you're using it recreationally anyway, at a time when you shouldn't be using it <laughs> at, all. at all. So a lesson so, to everyone. <clears throat> the bull says... <laughs> <laughs> don't, uh, don't do cannabis during a game. <laughs> and any sporting event. Because <laughs> you might have to go in. Yes, and you're definitely going to go in. Because that's kind of how it works. That's, so that's a good story. Yeah, so that was when I was 18. So. Did you learn a lesson from that? Not really. <laughs> Just uh, not to do it, not to do it <laughs> before a game. Everything else, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah that's any like, other time. But before a game, even if you know you're not going in, guess what? The same thing. Yeah. The, the universe is going to align, and you're going to go in and have to perform, dude. And that's uh, there's a lot of pressure. You know, and you don't want to have to not perform. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. As you move the dildoy mic up because it keeps falling. Just keeps saying. Falling. Very, very, very good. That wasn't intentional at all. No. So okay, so uh, no lesson learned other than not. not don't smoking. don't don't do it. Don't do an athletic event on cannabis. Just don't do that. Okay, so well, that's something learned. Yeah. Um, another funny story you have with it. With oh it. man, shoot. Man, oh, you, got got one. you got one? Good, because um, I'll think of one while I'm acting like I'm listening to what you're saying. All right, that works. Um, <laughs> God, what the hell is wrong with my hair and my face? Makeup! I, seriously, I Make look up. like way too... Oh, my God. Anyways, um, <laughs> shit. Five. Put it up there. Um, so oh, we're, okay. We're going to have a betting pool. I, I was gonna just going to say the same thing, too. Pool. I was about to say the same thing, We're going to set up a too. website with a betting pool. How many times <laughs> Jules is Jules going to forget her train of thought <laughs> during a two-hour two show. Two show? Obviously, very often. So, it was... Okay. I was, I, was, uh, I, I was trying out for a band. And again, this was in my 20s. And, and, and at that point, um, shit, yeah, I was working overnights in radio. So when I first got in, so I was trying out for a band and I, you know, and again, I was still in the experimental stage of smoking and everything like that. So I only tried it a handful of times. And, um, when I get there, um, to, to, uh, the rehearsal spot space, um, everybody else was smoking, you know, they're like, Hey, you want, and I only took like one or two hits, but again, it took, hit me all at once at the wrong time mm -hmm. and I was and I started freaking out and I'm pacing back and forth I'm like oh my god I gotta go to work 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 and all I remember throughout the whole thing was I was be I was given bread to eat bread as much as I could so it was, it's gonna not do? gonna soak anything up I know <laughs> but but that's what it was. Treat me like an alcoholic. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, I, I don't think that it doesn't soak anything up, right? But no, everyone's like, here, eat, and they're just giving me like freaking well, white eating, bread. Eating does kind of help. It, it yeah. does, yeah, but it's not the same. As, yeah, it's not the same, same as bag. Bag. Yeah, like it, in your stomach. You know, like yeah, you're going to go, go to the local greasy spoon to load up so yeah. you don't have a hangover. Gotcha. Right? It's not that, gotcha. yeah. So, but it was just yeah. So I'm, I don't know how much like freaking you know just store bread I ate and <laughs> I was still blasted on my mind and I don't remember anything else after that. I, I made it to work clearly and I was able to do my job clearly yeah. but uh, after that yeah no that was all yeah, I really remember. It. it was it was just that I just remember pacing back and forth and freaking out like I can't I'm gonna, I gotta go work I gotta go work I don't know what to do. <laughs> so again lesson to be learned be prepared, block your time out, don't do it before you have to go somewhere or do something or perform or anything like that, because, I mean, perform it depending on what kind of performance we're talking about, because it may not help. Yeah. It may put you in the wrong state. 
And that's not good. That's no, never good. No, it's never good. Because then you have to explain Again, that shit too. Performance issues. <laughs> performance issues. Yeah, we don't so, want those. You don't want no performance no issues. No performance issues. Now as a musician, it helps. Now for me, because like and I'm you know, like a lot of us who are, you know, entertainers and performers, you know, some of us, you know, we get a little anxious before we go on. We get yeah. a little that's just the norm because we all wanna be Perfect. We all want to be the best. We all want to, you know, go out there and, you know, entertain the shit out of our audience and make sure they're happy and give them everything they want. And that does come with a lot of pressure sometimes. And it comes with a lot of, you know, for me personally, anxiety and I can't be in my head. If I get stuck in my head, screw it. I can't remember anything. Don't know what I'm doing or anything, no matter. I've been playing music all my life and suddenly I have no clue. So for me, I, um, before performing, I usually will have, you know, again, just a couple cups, just a little something, take the edge off and bring me down a little bit. So, so the anxiety and the, God forbid, panic and um, anything else that starts coming up, uh, trauma wise or whatever, all that stuff is kind of quashed and yeah. pressed down a little bit. So I can stay out of my head and I can focus on playing. And uh, so th it's, that helps me, but that's, you know, again, my body chemistry and what I've learned to work with. So I, you know, before going on stage, I'll have a little bit just to bring me down enough so I can focus and direct my energy where it needs to go. Yeah, absolutely. Cause that's, I think part of the problem is not being able to direct energy correctly when you're not smoking versus when you're taking cannabis versus when you're not taking cannabis. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't, it's not accurate for me. Oh, okay. It's okay. accurate for you. Okay, so what's yeah. what, what, what more accurate what, what, for you? What, what, what. What's more accurate for you? Oh as my God, as, I can't repeat myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I need you to repeat yourself. Oh, what is more accurate, accurate for you? This is the part where we put in, like when we do the uh, the not live version and we like do a little rewind. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes those we have to cope oh my god that's what we need to do so i can remember what the hell i just said yes that's brilliant i love your I mind know. thank you i appreciate it absolutely and i'm sober right now so wow see that's what i'm gonna say for that yeah see you're, you're i'm brilliant either way you are you're the <gasps> mac daddy man oh thank you you're that's so 90s and it's awesome Jedi's. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you were gonna express what it hurt. Oh, oh, wait. oh I got a, I got another story. Oh, okay. This another is story. funny, man. Okay. Okay, oh, is so, it more funny than the last one? <laughs> yeah. So me and uh, my youngest daughter will do like car ride videos. Oh God! I've you seen know? Those. Yeah. You've seen you've seen some of them, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're driving, and um, what was that song? Uh, Cause move, bitch, get out the way, get out the way, bitch, get out the way. If move, it's pop, bitch. I'm not there. So anyway, it's it's hip hop. Oh, okay. Well, so we're going, and the week before that, I had it. I took with me to Universal because I'm a photographer. Sometimes, um, I took a little Stitch riding a skateboard, you know, from Lilo and Stitch. Mm -hmm. So I, I I go around Universal and I'll just take put it somewhere and I'll take pictures like, you know, the gnome, you know how people right. like in the eighties and the nineties would take oh, their God. little gnome with them and take pictures like at the Eiffel tower or whatever. Oh, right? that's right. Right. Was it the gnome or was it the hair dudes? The, the, hair the dudes. little plastic guys with all the hair. What the hell are they the trolls. The trolls. Yeah, yeah. The trolls. Yeah. So I did that with the skit. So it was in my car. Right? Okay. So that song comes on and that like, um, I just, we were on our way to get food because I just, Smoke, right? So we're on our way to get food, right? So we're going to get food. We're recording, and that song comes on, and I start going, "Oh, here we go!" I was like, "Move, bitch, get out the way!" And then I look down, and I go to grab it, and she grabs it before me. She's like, "Move, Stitch, get out the way, get out the way, Stitch, get out the way." It just happens to be that my dog's name is Stitch too. No shit. So like. It's just weird that both of us like thought of the same thing at the same time. Her obviously sober, me fucked up. I had to get on her level, you know. I had to smoke to get on her level gotcha. to get that creativity going, you know. And then that came out to be a whole bit, and like that's like one of the most viewed things that we had ever done. That's so that's awesome. a, that's a cool like you talking about being creative and stuff like that. That was a cool experience where creativity just came out. 
right. when we did when we did that little bit there. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that is cool. That's, that's a fun a, story. That is a good story. And once I get my Facebook back up, because I deactivated it, because you know sometimes you gotta take a break from it, right? I was wondering because I haven't seen any of it. Well, nothing for a for a bit for a while, but um, I'm gonna repost it so people can can check that out, or I might post it on. Yeah, post it on, on our Facebook. Yeah, post it on our Facebook too, so yeah. we can get the. Yeah, cause, I mean, you you have so many great positive uh, posts that you do. Oh, thank you. And I and it. I know, and I look for them every every morning because I'm always, you know, they help me. You yeah. know, it helps me keep staying directed, knowing that you know. <laughs> I'm not the Instagram only one. If you want. What was that? I do them on Instagram every morning. Now. Okay, I got you on that. Yeah, I think you I'm, don't have that, do you? Oh my god. No. See, so for me, social media is about work. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, so technically I, it is for me too. Right, so. yeah. So, you know, so it's like, if I don't, you know, other than, I'm, we discussed before, like I'm a scroller. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there's a lot of those, like, I've gone back and looked at those Instagram posts because I, I do a thing now called Bullish Notion, and it's mm -hmm. just I like, have yeah. you seen some of those? Mm -hmm. So, like a lot of those come to me when I'm, when I'm on cannabis. Yeah, as well they should. And it's just like, oh, that's brilliant. Let me put that. But then sometimes I won't remember them. And then when I look at them the next night, I'm just like, man, I'm a genius. See? You know, like, oh, yeah. you know, like something. It's, yeah. So um, that's another creative, positive thing that comes from, from doing cannabis. There are so many positive things, you know, aside yeah. from, you know. Well, just, okay, and, you know, we're kind of focused on the creativity part because we're both creative. You're an artist, I'm an artist, you know, right. so, like, that's our thing. We create. We're content creators, you yep. know, so, I mean. For our broadcasters? Yeah, so that kind of thing is, for me, it's, it, it's, it's always positive. Right. You know, it, there's no negative because there's always, to me, and lately, it's only been lately where I don't see that there's any negative anymore. I try and eliminate all the negative and yeah. take everything as a lesson, you know, and I think um, that is why I'm starting to elevate so much. That's why I'm starting to level up because you change that mindset. Would my mindset have changed? This, this is the big question that I ask myself lately. Would my mindset have changed without cannabis? And when I sit there and I delve into it and I dig into it and I take that onion and I start peeling it apart, I'm like, I don't think it would have because without it, I would have, I'd still be in that frame of mind where that brainwashing illusion that society puts on us, like you got to work a nine to five, you got to, you know, pay your taxes, you've got to do this and you have to have X amount of children and you have to have the mortgage and you have to, you know, all these things that actually imprison you, right? Yeah. And if you notice my life anyway, in the last year, just this year, this last year alone, um, I'm an entrepreneur now. I'm a small business owner now. I'm getting away from the nine to five. I'm more focused on, you know, creating long lasting wealth and not being stuck with paycheck to paycheck to paycheck where if I'm running my own businesses, one, that's my responsibility. So mm -hmm. it, it succeeds or fails based on my work ethic. And I don't think my mindset would have changed without cannabis to be where I am right now. Like right now I am in a great spot. I love where I'm at in my life because this is Great. where I always wanted to be. Awesome. You know, I wanted to be a creative person. I wanted to be a business owner. I wanted to come up with great ideas that are going to be successful. And I'm well on the way to that, you know. And I have to say it is because of cannabis. That's, see, now that. Because that changed, that rewired my brain to go back to where I was before all my trauma. Okay, you know, really, did so, it? Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. So, like, for an, exam for an example, okay, before all my trauma, the main trauma, mm -hmm. which was, you know, going to Iraq and experiencing that whole debacle, um, before that, I was the party guy. I was the guy that everybody, like, was inspired by. Everybody was like, oh, I want to be just like you because you have all these great ideas and, you know, you don't want to do the, the social norms. Right. You want to go outside the social norms and you want to be you independent thinker. Yeah. You don't want to be a cookie cutter person. No. You want to be 
you know, whoever yeah. you are and, yeah. and make money. And, and because I'm sorry, when I say make money, that equals freedom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And, and if, if a lot of you don't believe that it's all because of the system that we're currently in, you right. have, the only way to get freedom is to create wealth and, and get money. That's the right. only way we're going to be free. And to do that, we have to figure out voids in the market. I think a lot better on business things and finding those voids in the market when I'm on cannabis. Because for some reason, I see things that I wouldn't see normally. Not that I got to be obliterated, right? just a little boost mm-hmm. in here and in my body to kind of get that those creative juices going, those thought processes going, those connections of the receptors in the brain just firing on all cylinders. So, you know, it's a good question to pose. Like if you have a stoner friend and that person is somewhat successful and isn't in that normal social norm of like nine to five or whatever, maybe you should ask them, Hey man, what, what, uh, would, (laughs) would you be where you are today if you weren't doing cannabis? You know, and that's one of the questions that I've posted myself lately, and it's definitely 100%. I wouldn't be the same person. I'd be a boring 300 pound dude that's probably about to die of cancer or something. You know, if it wasn't for that. Because, like I said earlier in the broadcast, I got off all the pharmaceuticals because of cannabis. The pharmaceuticals didn't allow me to remember those years that I was on them. Like, it's very, just like images of things, that, of memories. That's it. I can't recall anything from that time frame. But from when I got rid of them and started using cannabis as a medicine, you know, and changing my lifestyle, then all this creativeness came out, all this, you know, wanting to be independent again, wanting to break away from the matrix or whatever you want to call it. You know? So, yeah, it's definitely helped my life out 100%. Well, that is a huge success story right there. I mean, you have several products. Okay. Yeah, I know. No, We're all here for you. I know. No, so and I'm no, here for you. Thank so. you. So, yeah, no, but really, it is. That, yeah. I mean, everything else you shared, you know, health-wise and all that stuff, mm-hmm. big, huge success. But especially, you know, in, in your day-to-day life and making your dreams come true. Yeah. Your cannabis is helping you make your dreams come true. You can't, I mean... Shit. So now here's here now now here's the other question now too. If society did not prohibit that, mm-hmm. right? Because we're taught as a young age like authority, 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 obey, 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 all this crap, right? So if my mindset would have been different back then and not been straight edged and just kind of like experimenting, program. yeah, program, yeah, you know, predictive programming, all that good stuff. If I would have experimented not only with like cannabis, but with psychedelics and all that at an earlier age, you kind of wonder, yeah, would all of the success that I'm having now came to me earlier? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like instead of in my forties would have come to me in my mid twenties. Twenties. Yeah. You know, or even earlier than that. Right. So, um, that's a great point. when, When people ask, or think of that or any of that stuff. It's like, I have to say, yes, that stuff helps me. That's just me. That's my experience. Yeah. It might not help you because if you look at, if you, if you look at like all the millionaires and the successful, wealthy businessmen and all that stuff, they'll say, stay away from cannabis, stay away from, you know, psychedelics, stay away from this. But these are guys that are just like super, super hyper focused on just, you know, being successful. I want that too. Mm-hmm. However, my process is going to be different than theirs. Right. You know, and you can't say that every successful, wealthy, you know, millionaire doesn't do these things. Right. That's just that individual. That's the route he took. That's what made him successful or her successful. That's their route. You know, my line might be something else, right? We know their line and I can learn from that, but then I have to apply that knowledge that they're giving to me to my line. Exactly. So 
Sorry, I got a little bit deep on that one. No, but, no, that's perfectly for, nice. We're here. But I mean, that's uh, that's one of those things that you you have to do that yourself. Though. You know, you like we said earlier in the program, we were like, "Yo, you got to experiment." You know, a lot of people are scared of that. We said that earlier, and it's just like you just have to do it. Yeah, because you never know what's going to come out on the other side. No, and you know, it might be good, it might be bad, but at least you know. You know what I mean? Right. And and I think overall, I think again, if you do it, you know, correctly, you do your research. That's the number one thing yeah. is research it, research it. And, and and there are plenty of people out there, you know, you know, like ourselves and um, uh, other um, companies or places you can go and you can talk at the dispensaries, yes. you talk to people at the oh, dispensaries. They're knowledgeable. They're very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. And there are, you know, even, you know, in other places where you go to qualify to get your card, they will, you know, they'll oh. walk you through the whole process. Mm -hmm. They'll give you a book that give you everything. They'll explain how, um, how, a uh, uh, um, not try phones, but, um, how, um, uh, the, um, Terpenes work. Oh, the terpenes, yes. How the terpenes work. And how that's a good point because you have to have the whole symbiosis of mm -hmm. the cannabis plant. Like we talk about CBD, separating right. CBD. We're talking about like separating THC, terpenes, all these things. Sativa, right? indica, and and it, hybrid, hybrid. Separating it all, but like they work in synergy with each other. Yes. So you need it all. So you have some people that'll say that separating it that's the bad that's a bad thing that's like as bad as like gmoing food you know like don't separate it you have to keep it together and i'm glad you brought up the terrapins because you need those with whatever cannabis strand that you're taking or you know and now they're finding that if you enhance your cannabis with terrapins that you can create a different experience. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, like, that's a very specific experience. Okay, so, so what kind of terpenes would you have to? I, that specifically, I don't know. Okay. But I know you. there's things out. I've seen charts and things on terpenes that are out there. I just haven't committed them to memory. Right, right. So, but they're out there to look. Just GTS, man. You know? That, that's where you start. GTS. Yeah. And then from there, you go to published papers. And reading published papers and the thing is is like people don't want to read published papers because they're done in medical terms right but it's just like with anything Thank when you were first learning to read if you didn't i don't know yeah. we're exers so when we didn't understand a word we dictionary. went to the dictionary so when you're talking medically you go to a medical dictionary and say exactly. what does that word mean what's the context of it in this sentence you know so I it, it, it might it might take a week to read a three-page paper on terrapines, but you'll understand how it might work with your body and how you might benefit or not benefit from it. So, exactly. And I do, and I just want to point out, I do do exactly what you said too. I mean, I go to the medical journals. Mm -hmm. I'll read that stuff, and again, yeah, exactly. Anything I don't know or recognize or can't pronounce, yep. go look it up, figure it out, and within the context. And it's again, you know, not that hard, and yeah. You know, it, 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 then you're getting like you know you're you're getting you're getting a scientific yes. information. You're not getting what's the word an opinion from yeah. just somebody that's on the internet that you found because you GTS it. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. somebody <laughs> so, advertising their their shit thing yeah. and everything like that. So because the algorithm said that you would most likely <laughs> fall for this uh, fall for this this thing here. That's so. way to put it. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I still do that. Like I'm a legal professional too, and I still have to go to the, uh, the legal dictionary and be like, I don't even know what that means. Like, it it just sounds like a whole other language. I mean, it's legalese; it's a whole other language. But yeah. I still have to go and like, okay, I need legal terms. What does this word mean? Because it could mean. In normal terms, it could mean this, but it doesn't mean that in legal terms. You know what I mean? So, oh yes, that's always a big problem. Saying, you know what I mean? Huh? Do you understand? Do you understand? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, yeah, those are those things that uh, you have to take personal responsibility for doing those things to educate yourself. Right, and that's the biggest thing: education, education, education. Autodidact. Yeah. yeah. 
educate yourself and then, you know, and then again, start off small, start with some CBD. You can get that virtually, yeah. but go to a CBD shop. This is the other thing we need to bring up. Mm -hmm. Don't go, don't buy it at the gas station. Don't buy oh, it at Walmart. Please don't buy it at the gas don't station or Walmart or, or Target or, any, or anywhere else. No, you have to go to an educated person's, um, CBD shop. Like exactly. they specialize in CBD. in CBD and talk to them and they will. And again, you can walk into, I think most dispensaries nowadays as a visitor, just yes, to talk, just to talk to, to, just to talk to somebody and get some information because CBD, you don't need a card for, you don't need a medical marijuana card to get, uh, to get CBD. It's available again here at grassroots. You can get them in drinks. You can get them anywhere, pretty much here at the e-board. There's a lot of places you can get CBD. But, but with, with anything else, like there's going to be high crap. quality stuff yeah. and then there's going to be crap stuff. So you got to know what's what and like here, like you, you would have to research this company mm -hmm. to figure out if it's actually CBD. good CBD. So, but but you find how they you, infuse it, all that good stuff. But what was that? No, I was just gonna say, but when you drink it, you notice a change. You notice a difference. Well, one time when we came here, mm -hmm. I was I was pretty Stressed. high. Oh, high. I was okay. pretty high, and I needed to come down a little bit. This is when we were brainstorming for to right. do all of this stuff, and I was like. Um, I'm a little bit too far out there, so let me, and it wasn't this one, it was a different one that they had, but mm -hmm. like within 10, 15 minutes, I'd come down to the point where we could get work done, so. See, that's amazing. Yeah. So, it, you know, again, the help is out there, again, you know, you can reach out to us, but reach out, go to, the, check out the dispensaries, talk to somebody about CBD, talk about, um, you know, THC, figure out how the terpenes work, figure out what strain you need, you know, indica versus sativa versus hybrid, how all those, those things work. Because again, they all work together. Everybody needs something different. But yep. as you pointed out earlier on, it goes, the the THC, the CBD, all of that goes to where your body needs yeah. it. Where your body needs it. So if it needs, if you're in pain, bam, it goes to your pain receptors. If, you're, if it needs to heal something that's badly damaged with inside you, it'll go go there and that's something else I wanted to bring up too because um it it's a cleanser too it you know hemp as well not just not yeah it's not just yeah. cannabis but the hemp plants those things all of that takes out the poison sucks it, it, it what does it do it just it just um sucks up the poison well, it, the crap it gets down to the molecular molecular and the yeah. DNA level mm -hmm. to where it will start hitting switches to reset whatever is ailing you. And it will get rid of poisons and, and bad things in well, your yeah, body. Yeah, definitely. It will do that too. But it's not, like we said earlier, it's not a one-stop shop. You have to incorporate this, we'll call it a therapy, mm -hmm. in with other lifestyle changes like your diet and you know exercising and doing all these different things. You have to combine all that stuff together. It's not just like, oh, let me go and take so RSO and I'm going to be better all of a sudden. No, yeah, that's, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You have to do a total body experience, you know. So you have to do the diet because everything you put in, if you put good stuff in, good stuff comes in. Yeah, if you put bad stuff in, oh man, you're gonna grow a third arm, man. You know, so <laughs> just saying. <laughs> There was one direction to go with it, so that, that's good. Well, I just went to to the extreme just to kind of illustrate, you know. Like, was well, better. I was going to use a bathroom and all. Oh, okay. But, well, no, that's okay. Well, good thing I saved everybody. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah that was a good one. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> prank. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, so yeah, and there was also something else I wanted to say too. Mention when you do workouts. One of the first things I learned about CBD was if you take CBD before workout mm -hmm. and then post workout, you your recovery time is yeah. so much faster, and that's okay. just with CBD. Okay. That's just with CBD. Your recovery time is much faster because you've already got it in your system. You do your workout, you run or walk. So recovery time. Like, what do you mean by recovery time? Your right? muscles, you know, you, you know, your your muscles, uh, you know, um, you still have, you know, not the pain and the stiffness and everything you get from, you know, yeah, you know, you're always going to have that soreness, but, yeah, okay. but the recovery from, you know, muscles tearing, breaking down and tearing them down to build them back to build up. Them back up quickly. Yeah, it, it, it helps in that recovery time. Because I think, I think it may be an inhibitor of amino acids because that's what 
that's what helps recover your, uh, your muscles quicker is the amino acids that you ingest or take in from your food or whatever to to shorten that recovery time. So it might inhibit it to uh, speed up that recovery. It might seek out those amino acids and bring them to the most damaged parts first. You know what I mean? That, yeah, that makes sense. So, so that's yeah. not one hundred percent GTS. That might be true, but that's just what I'm going off of. Just what little tiny sliver of knowledge that I have about that. So. No, that was good. That was a good piece. Thank you. Good, very good piece. Um, so I right know we're coming down to the last uh, fifteen minutes here of the show. Um, so. Do, is there anything we want to continue, or do we want to re reiterate something, or where are we going? Where do we want I don't to know. I'm just saying, like, people need to come down here and hang out with us, because know, they're about right. to kick off at 7 o'clock here. Trivia. Trivia, man. So, like, come down, hang out, check out the show, do some tri trivia. We can hang out after. We can talk about it. We can go smoke J. We can do whatever you guys want, man. We're here for you guys. We want interaction. Um, and the more people that we get to hang out with, the more we can learn from each other. So, and that's what we're all get about. Get your is Joan here. <laughs> Come on, Ebor is fun, even on a weekday. Yeah, night. definitely. It's still fun. Yeah, or it's always fun. So, and then, I mean, there's a lot of people here. They so. yeah, load up in here for a trivia, man. Yeah. Well, for anything. I mean, well, even when I was sitting, I mean, I had a hard time finding somewhere to sit uh, today. And, uh, yeah, but I mean, this grassroots Kava, man, they're, this place they're cool. Is, uh, it's jumping, man. So, no Come, on down. Come on down, check us out. Um, what are we? Where are we going next week? Do we have? We have a. I don't think we've we've gone that far yet. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't. Stay tuned. Have well, no, stay tuned. Yeah. We'll we'll do yeah. our uh, post. How about you comment on what you might want us to talk about? There you go. And some upcoming shows. Yeah, please. Yeah, please share your thoughts because it's it. This show is your show. Yeah. This is uh, your show to take part in, to add to, and that's what we're looking for here. We're just kind of right. like the moderators and kind of keep the, control the chaos yeah. kind of thing. Am I using, am I we, Yeah, I guess we are controlling chaos. Yeah, right? a little bit. Because it is pretty chaotic. Mm -hmm. just, shh. Yeah, it's pretty chaotic out there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, so, uh, let me do this. Let me do a couple things like this really oh. quick. So. Um, let's, uh, let me, let me, uh, give some love to Grassroots Kava. I know I'm a slob. I have a drinking problem. What are you drinking, by the way? Oh, yes, thank you. I am drinking Kava. This is a, a bowl of Kava. I think it's called bowl. I mean, no, I know it's called something else. Anyways, we are here at Grassroots Kava, and they have some of the greatest kava I've ever had because they do these mixes. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Guys. Awesome. Very good. Um. These are terms that need to be defined, right? So before we move on to a further. Okay, all right. Let's define. I'm it. just saying, yeah, you know, no, like those, those are things that. Because when you have a conversation with someone, just nonchalantly anyway, it's, I think there's a lot of confusion when you have a conversation because you don't define terms, right? So, no, I think you're absolutely right because so. I think about that often. In fact, I was thinking that on my way down is that there are different, um, you know, we all, our, our perspectives of, you know, certain words are different from everybody else's. And, yes. Yeah, and you're right. You, we do have to define. Well, that's because we go by. through the etymology. We go through that etymology right. in our head, and like, okay, this is what that word actually means. You know, yeah. Instead of like, maybe what's socially acceptable or what what's commonly accepted for for that word. And like an example, I'll give you an, a quick example. So like anarchy, mm -hmm. right? If you ask anybody on the street, what does anarchy mean? What What do you think you the answer you're going to get? Uh, that they're gonna say. Well, most people will, will say that means. I, I don't know what most people would say. I guess I'll just say what chaos. I, usually. Yeah, I mean, me, I would just say yeah. There'd be unrule and there'd be unruling. Mm. You know, just society would just go and yeah, fall apart and break down into chaos because there would be uh, no enforcement of laws or no enforcement of anything, and there would just be chaos. But on the same level. If you look at the etymology of the word, anarchy, you know, comes from the prefix an from Greek, 
which means without, right? And then archon, which is ruler, right? So it's without a ruler. A ruler. It doesn't mean no rules. It means without a ruler. Right. So you, if you are an anarchist, you are one who is a sovereign eventually. Yeah, you, you have no ruler. You have, you no, have no ruler. Yeah, you are. You are you. Yeah. You police yourself up. You know, like. But that's that's. They came to you. Got that title because you became aware, or you became you came to a certain consciousness level, right? So that's that's where anarchy came from. So like, but if you look at back in the days, like in like holy scripts and stuff like that, the archons were the slave owners, or they were the rulers. Right. So um, yeah, when you look at the history of a word and you see how it's changed. Then you also start, have to start thinking, hey, why did it change? Yes, and, and how is it defined today? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you said Urban Dictionary. I'm saying, you know, you go to Webster's Merriam or whatever. Yeah. And, and, you can or actually, Oxford. Oxford, yeah. yeah. And because you can actually, a lot of places, I, I found that there are times where you can see the progression of the work, the definition of the word throughout mm-hmm. the, because they'll go back and say, in the uh, 18th century or whatever, this word meant this, and mm-hmm. that's what it came about, but today it means X, Y, and Z. Yes. And you're right, and that's a that's a I think a basis for how miscommunication happens is because we all have our own yes. thought process and our own beliefs of what words mean mm-hmm. um, due to our own experience, yes. and then it makes it difficult to communicate when one person thinks, okay, I'm saying the most logical, clear, clarifying as much as possible using very specific words. And and to 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 um, express a thought, but then to come to find out what you're expressing is something different to that other person, and now they're in a completely different headspace. How would you find that middle ground? How do you meet each well, other? I mean, right off the bat, you have to just say, "Hey, this is what this word means, and this is what it's going to mean throughout this whole conversation." Do you agree to those terms? That's what agreeing to terms means. Like when you do a contract, or like you agree to those terms. That's when you when you have a conversation with someone, you're agreeing to a contract that this is what these definitions of these words mean. So when you have that conversation throughout, you know, forever, how long you're going to have that conversation, that's what those words mean. So there's no confusion on what uh, what you're talking about, what I'm talking about. That's just what it means, and that's what we've agreed upon right. is the definition of this word. So when we have that conversation, there's no miscommunication. So how, so do so there are always fair fight rules, right? When you get married and all that stuff, they have like fair fight rules. So what are the fair rules of What's debating when well, you're having a conversation? What, is, what is a fair fight rule? Like, explain that to me. Oh, I guess. See, like, I, I see. This is going to be a good example. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I, from the fair fight rules, if I can recall, you know, it's it's. Um, is removing the emotion from the situation um, is one one rule in order to have a quote unquote or no so unquote, just unquote, s- staying fighting. objective yeah staying objective yeah. but being able to have like uh, to express it, you know it, listening to one person and then giving the other person a chance to speak and stuff yeah. like that but that jump in. and it's basically that kind of stuff so um, I forgot my, my point what my point was but you're defining what fair fight is. rules oh yes because. Yeah. So my, my, I guess what I was trying to get to was, you know, what are the fair fight rules to have a conversation? Well, first you start with defining your definitions, yeah. right? And then maybe set some parameters on, you know, like fallacious arguments and irrelevance and facts that don't, that aren't relevant, you know, kind of get rid of all that stuff and try and come to an understanding with just using the terms that we've, we've defined and, and going back and forth like you said let one person talk listen to what they have to say you take that in then you process it and then you, you rebut or agree disagree whatever so I mean it's it's a back and forth and it's like you said you try and take a, take away emotion passion's always going to be there though, oh yeah you know, passion's oh, always absolutely. going to be there but yeah I mean I think those are the rules I mean the first thing you have to do like we've been saying for like the last three or four minutes is you have to define your terms before you move on so is this with any conversation, like everyday conversation or a debate or... Well, everyday conversation, you're most likely going to be having conversations with people 
that you, you know, it's not that end. deep. I mean, well, the conversation's not that well, deep. Well, I mean, or? the people that you're having conversations with every day are probably the people that you see every day, correct? So you've probably defined a lot of your terms and stuff already. Good point. Okay. okay. So um, with that, I mean, I, I think there's an understanding that we can we continue with those definitions that we've already established. Like as friends, you know, we we speak a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. Because we understand that this word means that, or that word dis means this, or a certain phrase means this, right? We have our own jargon, so to say, right? Sure. So, um, but with new people that you interact with, I mean, I think it's when you're having a conversation, it's, all right, hey, let's stop there. Let, let me ask this question real quick so yes. I can understand what your, what your whole point is yeah. to whatever topic we're talking about. So I think asking questions is a huge deal, not only for conversation, but for learning and for progressing in consciousness or anything like that. So. so let me ask you now, how would you converse with somebody who won't give you the opportunity to speak and they keep jumping on you and, I mean, not to ask questions, but yeah. to, to, who aren't hearing and they just want to keep telling you what they believe or what they think? Yeah. Well, that person isn't open to listening to other people's thoughts on. Yeah. So at that point you just, I don't know. A lot of times I'm just like, hey, I gotta go do this. Or, you know, I got, you know, it's something else. Oh, I gotta go take a phone call or, you know, whatever. It's just, you kind of gotta walk away from someone like that because nothing you do or say, they're not gonna take the information in and process it. They've already made up their mind and they're blocking out everything. Hey, it's okay, we're back. So I hope you enjoyed that little segment. And what did you want to so, add? So funny story is when I was talking about how we came in here to do some stuff for the for the show, I was a little too high and um, I had some CBD to bring me down. That that was the exact that was the, time that, that, was that I was time talking about. Yeah, when we were discussing word etymology. Yeah, so, word etymology. So, which yeah. was a great topic for, yeah. for when you're high. Yes, for me it is. It yeah, was. You were awesome. Yeah. You were so, <laughs> so detailed, you. And, and you were you were great. And the good yeah. news is, there's another uh, almost nine minutes of that. We can play that part uh, later. We'll do that next time. Next time, uh, because it was just such a that was so much fun. So yeah, yeah. that was one of your brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you're always brilliant. But oh, this thank is, you. This was this. Hey, no, absolutely. Tell the truth. This is one of this is one of the segments that actually that, that helps illustrate illustrate um, what we were talking, talking about, about just minutes before. So. Right, how great cannabis can be. With, yes. you know, and, and creativity. I mean, there we created like almost a 20 minute bit of of word <laughs> etymology, and yeah. that was all all on that was oh, all from you. That all came you. from your awesome brain. I don't even remember what we were talking about in that. I don't either. I don't remember. I'm going to have to go back and watch it. I, don't, I know. We have to go like back. what started it. I don't like remember. It, but yeah. I think was, we were talking and then, and then you brought up, you're like, we have to understand, we have to set. Um, we have to define terms. Yes, yes. we have to define terms. So there's no confusion, confusion when we're, we're speaking to each other. So. And, and that worked out so well. So take so take notice. That is an example of yes. how cannabis, an actual physical example <laughs> of how well cannabis could help and uh, really you know hyper focus your brain. And, and I mean, you're, I mean, the fact that you even, yeah, I mean, word etymology. Yeah. How many people can, can honestly even say, say that? that and and <laughs> say if they know what that means? Yes, exactly. And I want to point out there's this one part in there where I. <laughs> Where it's already defined, and I go back and I'm like, yeah. So I'm like looking through something. I was I like to read what it meant back in 1800 and all this stuff. I'm just I already know what word etymology is, and there I am reiterating it for myself because whatever I wasn't high. Maybe, Maybe that that's why that, that was the, that's, yeah, that that's was the, the problem. Thing. I wasn't high. Yeah. So yeah. we have uh, we're just coming up to the close of the show. Thank you, everyone. Robert, yay! Thanks for joining yeah, us. Thanks today. for joining us today. And Appreciate it. Yes, and you can find us here every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Facebook. And uh, we'll, uh, I gotta go back and get YouTube connected, but we'll, we're here. And we're here and come down here physically to Grassroots Kava um, in Ybor City. Hang out with us. We're here until um, 5 to 7 doing the show. You can be part of the show. You can wave and say, oh, I'm on. Yes, from right here. From right there. Look, see all the people? Yeah. They're getting ready to do trivia, so that's about time for us to go. Yeah. Any last words for no, this week? I'm the bull.
Get this is Jules. I'm oh, Jules. Yeah. And we will see you next time. Have a good week.